now joined on the line by James Black to look back on the iconic TV comedy US series Anger Management. And James, I suppose, first of all, if you look back through your resume, uh, Soldier, Godzilla, Out of Sight, Universal Soldier, The um, the Burning Zone, and even your new feature, uh, Better Criminal. What made you, what drew you to Anger Management? It was something, as I said, completely out there in relation to comedy series. It was one of its kind, and the character Cleo, when you heard about the opportunity, how did it come about for you to get cast in Anger Management? Well, you know, it's uh, so interesting how life has a way of coming full circle, and in this case, that's what it did. Um, I was in an uh, improv comedy troupe uh, right. before I came out to Los Angeles to begin acting with uh, a man named Michael Loftus. Uh, 20 years prior to me getting the part, and in the improv comedy group, I uh, did a character very, very similar to the Cleo character. Yeah. So uh, when Michael Loftus became a producer on the show, he immediately said that we need to find James Black because he would he, he understands exactly how this character is built and, and, and what makes him tick. So... I was brought in to the audition, and soon after auditioning, which went very well, as you can understand, yep. I was told that uh, I'd be playing Cleo. Yeah, and I suppose, James, when you got that call and you were told about Cleo, I was speaking there to Barry Corbin there uh, the other day, and he told me that for the first the 10 episodes that it was just uh, contract by contract based, and it was the same then until that you got that win that you were going to have a full 90 episodes. Was it the series bit on d- in doubt at first, or did you know from the start that you, after the first or second or third episode, that another 90 were coming? I had no idea. I was hoping that that would be the case. Uh, everybody was sitting around on pins and needles just waiting for that call to happen. And I, I, I have to tell you, I, I really didn't know. I yeah. had an idea because of, you know, the people that involved and, and Charlie being a part of the program that, you know, we had a good shot of doing it. So I was, I was hopeful, I can say. Yeah, and I suppose, James, if we look at the sort of Cleo character, and uh, we there's a great contrast in relation to there, even there in se- season one, where we learn about Cleo on the outside played uh, the Derek sort of role as well. And it's it sort of shows the variety of Cle- Cleo being a bris- prison bride to Donovan during the therapy sessions with Charlie and the minute he gets the parole it's back to the normal sort of uh, straight life sort of scenario with that and that's sort of a change in the char- to character to have that sort of early it made people sort of relate to the what maybe the, learn a bit more about the Cleo character so very early on in the anger management franchise yeah it was it was, uh, it was a cool sort of juxtaposed uh, for me to be in, uh, I based my character uh, on uh, a, a person in my, a cousin of mine who what? I lived with for many, many years. So as soon as uh, that call was made, you know, even in the improv group, I, I had something to draw on because mm. I was very close to my cousin at the time. So. Yeah, I suppose, James, if we talk about the humour in Anger Management and the jokes and the one-liners and the sentences, and I suppose there is so many, you could be here all night <laughs> talking about so many of them. But uh, there's some there's some very, very, very good ones. Uh, in, the, in the series there where you're talking, Charlie is an expert uh, witness. And there you could, there's a sentence here, heads and tails never fail and sil- silver dollars will make you holla. <laughs> and it just sort of it just sort of uh, struck me in relation to that well, the sentence as if to say wh- where did that come out of and uh, even in tr- the interaction there with Lindsay Lohan uh, where you're talking you ask com- cosmetics uh, I can't get eyeliner in here any tips on cockro- cockroach dust and toilet roll paper <laughs> you know I have to credit the, the, the writers of that show they mm. were spot on they were on set with us and if uh, something worked then they would work to tighten up the, the script right then and there they would 
have uh, second lines and third lines waiting for us. And after the the the, the show went on, they uh, would allow us to experiment with you know the character because we began to know who the characters were and which direction they wanted us to go in. So we worked hand in hand with the writers all the time. You know, and working with Lindsay, I was like. She was such a good sport because yeah. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm saying these lines to her face and she was just a trooper and did not break character or didn't get upset uh, or, or offended at the jokes that we, we had at, at her expense. And that, I have to say that's kudos to her. Yeah, and I suppose, James, it almost felt like watching it that there was a battle between the to two to two of Charlie's therapies groups, the ter- the prison therapy group and the 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 sitting room cast therapy group to outdo we sort of each other there. And in relation to the working the the close knit group that you are, the settings uh, where would we see an out we see an outside shot of a prison, but the actual filming for a year where Charlie goes to prison, where did that? take place was that was that in a nearby location to the filming where the other therapy session went or you know actually uh all the scene or i'd say 99 percent of the scenes were filmed right on the stage Mm -hmm. and the prison uh if you will was uh, was uh, crafted right in the place where the other uh, uh group was usually would film in in that living room right they changed it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing what they can do with a, a few walls and some brick and mortar and, and some paint. Uh, but basically, we filmed it right where the other group was, was, was um, filmed their scenes. And that, <laughs> that was... <laughs> a lot of the people in the prison, the, the extras and yeah. everybody was, was just... Uh, some of them were real. And everybody was uh, was on board as being just a little off kilter, a little crazy. And uh, a lot of times, some of the the best lines were just ad lib uh, mm. lines. And uh, my goal, and our goal in the prison group, was to get Charlie to laugh. So he would see the script, but we would, you know, talk to the writers and and, and try to uh, get new lines in there. And our goal was to get Charlie to laugh so uncontrollably we'd have to do a spit take but that was that was our goal for each episode yeah and I suppose uh, in relation to the prison group we hear all the backstories of Wayne and we hear the backstories of Ernesto and Cleo and in relation to that and the, the some of the stuff I mean the the prison riot scene uh, where Charlie and uh, his friend Michael become sort of uh, kidnapped uh, uh, hostages as such where you take over the prison all over to bring back Meatloaf Thursday and stuff like that the humor and the co- the comedy and the sketches and stuff like that but um in relation to the working week in anger management. Uh, would you come in there of a Monday? Would you hear that you were going to be out running on a two or three shows or for characters like yourself that, that James, that you were, I think it was over 45 episodes that, of the series that you were in. Would you be filming in blocks of a few episodes or was it a case you were just waiting for that call each week to, to know if you were on that particular episode? Yeah, basically uh, we were week to week and didn't know when, um, depending on schedule when we were going to come in uh, at all. So, yeah, we were sitting by the phone. We knew that something would happen, but we weren't sure when the phone call was going to happen. So, um, but we were, I I was assured that, you know, I'd be in, I'd be used uh, quite a bit, which was fun. And, you know, like the prison episode was was such a big episode. I think we filmed that over uh, four days. And usually, uh, we would film our uh, our prison scenes in about in, in, a, in a couple of hours because we were <laughs> we were a weld oiled machine. Yeah. And Charlie is such a, a great actor. Uh, he he is you know he was in every scene and he was spot on ninety nine percent of the time. I mean he was like he would look at the script one time and go okay let's let's see what we got. Yeah. And it was fun to play. He he was he was fun on set. To, to work with yeah and did you was there much interaction say with uh did you get to interact with like barry corbin um 
uh, uh, Laura Bell Bundy, uh, Daniel Bobadillo, and the rest of the cast, uh, were, or were your scenes particular where you were coming in, shooting those various scenes? Was there, was there much interaction between all the cast? Uh, basically, I would be uh, only filming with the prison, the, okay. the, my fellow prisoners. Um, but like like you said before, in the one episode, uh, the one episode where I get out of prison, I go to uh, Charlie's house. Yeah. So I got to interact with the other the other uh, fair, uh, his patients mm. and, and sit down and tell them my crazy life stories. And they and, and I think you remember the episode uh, yeah. where they were just I tell them about different things that were going on in my life and they just sat there plain face and not know what to say. Yeah, I I remember what I remember one line there um, where you're talking about your mother and you said your mother would burn you with cigarettes to stop you reaching across the table for food real quick, <laughs> and it started to put the. The, the kibosh and everyone is sort of a quick sort of silence and stuff like that but then you sort of that episode you had to switch between two characters you had to switch between the Cleo and your normal sort of uh, what I saw everyday sort of character and Derek and such like that but to be able to switch on and off does that require multiple shooting or was it a case where you were on a scene and you had to quickly switch from Derek to Cleo or was it or, or was there takes in between I mean, I uh, I got to know I know that character so well. Okay. I, I could break into character on a dime, awesome. uh, and most folks on set, including the uh, uh, the folks behind the scene, didn't know which one of my characters was the real James Black. So they yeah. weren't sure which uh, side of the fence I was uh, usually playing on, and, yeah. and I like to keep it that way. <laughs> And James, in relation to working with Charlie, Charlie Sheen, I, he strikes me as a, a constant guy who's a, a, an, an innovator, a sort of an entrepreneur who's constantly thinking on ways to improve, to p- improve uh, everything in relation to be a perfectionist on set. And is he a guy that can spot something out of place or out of sync and say we need to change this or we need to do that or we need to tweak any sort of actions or is he a guy that would probably relate to other members in, in or of the cast, maybe younger ones as well, that do certain bits of tweaks or small little set, so, settled, subtle things that could make a difference. Is he a guy that likes to step in and get involved? Oh, yeah. You know, he was right there with the writers and the other actors. He was he was the guy that would set up a joke for you. He's like, how can, you know, he'd look at you and say, how can I set this up? better so your joke will land and mm. you know we would read through one time before we shoot and he'd have ideas of you know and we'd all sit around and say hey what do you think about this this moment here and he was that kind of guy he, he worked as a he was a team player and he wanted the best for the scene he always would go the extra mile to do that Mm. And James, looking at anger management, it was so big in relation to all the areas of touch and such a broad sort of cast. It often made me wonder, was there ever a possibility of spin-off shows to come from? That's something Barry Corbin mentioned himself and Martin Sheen probably talk about a spin-off between them going off and in their own apartments and stuff. And even the idea... For you, you, your prisoners group, it was almost like one show in itself. You could almost have a spin-off series from it. And that's the possibility that Anger Management brought up in relation to that. And if an opportunity of a spin-off uh, show came in relation to the prisoners going out in the real world and interacting as a unit, or was that something that would uh, would appeal to you? Oh, my God, yes. Playing with uh, Ernesto and, and Wayne would be... An- such uh such fun mm. oh my god I, I it would be more fun than i've ever had in my life those guys are hysterical mm. i mean off 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 camera they're just as funny so if that ever came up i would be definitely 100 percent on board with that that would be fantastic well that's brilliant to hear and james oh, yeah. how would you describe the your portrayal of the cleo character if someone said to you james black Anger management played Cleo and left two sentences like in a dictionary blank underneath those. How, what would you like those to read? I would 
say that Cleo is a caring, uh, introspective character who cares more about other people than he does himself, mm -hmm. even to spite himself. Right. That's that's intriguing. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's yeah. a, that's a great take on it, James. Before we let you go now, I, I'm speaking to Daniela now in around twenty minutes. But just in relation to this, we're doing a quick sort of celebrity quiz in relation to uh, about what you is called celebrity. How well do you know Ireland? We have over sixty celebrities from everyone from Tara Reid to Bill Duke to Robert Davy, everyone on it. It's sort sort of ten simple questions about Ireland. It'll only take you about a minute and a half. Do you want to give it a go? Oh my God, I'm going to fail miserably, but yes, I would love to just fall flat on my face. Yes, no, that would be fun. No problem, James Black. James Black, you're a celebrity. How well do you know Ireland? Question number one. Can you name any colour in the Irish flag? Green. Correct. One from one. Question number two. Can you name any county in Ireland? Ireland. <laughs> Well, Ireland is Ireland, but it's not a county, I'm afraid. Question number... Uh, Dabbleshire, how's that? No, that's in England. Uh, okay, qu question number three. March the 17th is known worldwide as what day? Uh, that would be... Oh, my gosh. Uh, St. Paddy's Day. Correct. Question number four. Which of these is a famous Irish tourist attraction worldwide? Is it A, the Cliffs of Moher, B, Brandenburg Gate, or C, Eistermau Castle? Uh, C? No, the castle's in Wales. It's the Cliffs of Moher. Question number five. Which of these is a famous Irish river? Is it A, the River Shannon, B, the River Rhine, or C, the River Lech? B, the River Rhine. No, the River Rhine's in Germany. It's A, the River Shannon. Oh my God, that was my first choice. <laughs> Question number six. Can you name any Irish famous sports star? And I'll give you a hint. This guy fl fought Fly Mayweather last year in a big publicised event. Oh, oh, uh, 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 oh, I, oh my gosh. Oh, uh, my brain stopped. Oh my God. No. McGregor. Correct. Yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah. Question number seven. What famous alcoholic beer was founded in Ireland? Beer? Yeah. What beer? Did I, did I get it right? No, no. No, what beer? What, what, what was the name of the beer that was founded in Ireland? Uh, the, the, uh, oh, gosh. It's the one in the big can. Oh, my God. Uh, go, no, not Goebbels. Is it Goebbels? No, it's uh, Guinness. Guinness! Yes, yes, that's what I meant. Get yes. it. Question number eight, James. Ireland was once occupied by what country? And it's our neighbours. Brit, 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 uh, England. Correct. Question number nine. Which plant or shrub is the national symbol of Ireland? Uh, clover. Correct. And last question. You'll, you'll get this no problem. Can you name any famous Irish actor or musician? Uh, oh my God. Oh, uh, that, no, that's Australia. Oh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> my brain stopped. I apologize. No, James Black, you're a celebrity. How well do you know Ireland? You scored five out of ten. Over 50 celebrities, that puts you roughly in around 26th, 26th or 27th place. James, James, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you about Anger Management, a show that was, I have to say, was really, really funny, a, per a show that I personally enjoyed. We've spoken, we've done shows about various, from Married with Children to various U US sitcoms from that 70s show. And I have to say, Anger Management really stands up there in one of the, uh, in one of the tests of time. And I'm sure as the years goes by, it will be defined as a cult classic. And your portrayal as Cleo really brought a laughter to all our TV viewers' face. And we wish you, James, all the best in your future endeavours. And please, God, there will be a spin-off show in the near future. Oh, man. From your mouth to God's ears, thank you so much. No problem, James. Take care.